Hey guys, it's Jill and welcome to my booktube channel. In this video, I'll be reading books on Kindle Unlimited. This is going to be a spoiler-free reading vlog and I have a few books downloaded on here, but I first wanted to show you the stickers I got for my Kindle, which in my Kindle unboxing video, I was saying I was waiting for a few stickers to come in and I'll show you them now. I literally just made a TikTok of this, but I have Mood Reader, Enemies to Lovers, this little toaster strudel, Ali Hazelwood books, Akatar, and last one is this little open book with flowers. And I think they're all super cute. For this video though, I feel like I'm just going to kind of mood read. I'm going to start off with Off the Beaten Path. And this one was recommended to me on that Kindle unboxing video I made. And the person that commented said they rated it five stars. So I'm hopeful that this one will be good. I really have no idea what it's about, but I'm going to get it started now. I'm currently 50% through this book. I'm on chapter 14 now. This is a rom-com. There's quite a few tropes in here. So we have single dad, um, hidden identities, grumpy sunshine, as well as a little bit of fake dating, I would say. The main female character, Ren, she just bought this property that she intends to rent out but it's quite the fixer-upper, so she hired this contractor to help her renovate and everything. However, he had to cancel on her due to a family emergency. But of course, the main male character, Holden, he is also a contractor, so he agrees to help her renovate this new place in time for the spring. So there's kind of a time crunch there, but Holden thinks that he can do it in the short amount of time that he has because April's when she's hoping things can kind of get started and that's kind of when I think the touristy season in the town is. So she's hoping at that point she can have some short-term renters. Like I mentioned before, Holden is a single dad. So he has a daughter, her name's June. And so far she's not like super in the book that much. Much, but I do think she's pretty cute but of course Holden is kind of not interested in dating and finding a relationship because he doesn't want anything to interrupt with him being a father and everything I think that's all I can really say that was kind of included in the book description and without spoiling the rest but so far I'm really enjoying it and I've been reading it super fast it's like no brain power it's just super cute and easy to read um, I will say one thing though is that the floor that they chose for the renovation of the cabin was like millennial gray flooring and I was like ew that's not a choice I would make anyways besides that I feel like one other thing I did want to mention was that I feel like the characters have got together maybe a little bit sooner than I would prefer. I think I like more so that slow burn. I don't think they got together like too too fast where I was like turned off of it, but maybe just like a little bit faster than I normally would prefer. Anyways though, I'm really excited to see how this one ends up and I'll give you guys my final update when I'm done. I finished Off the Beaten Path and I honestly really enjoyed it. I'm going to save my ratings till the end of this video, but I feel like this book was a great start to this reading vlog. There wasn't really a third act breakup, which I feel like I haven't truly read. Maybe I think that Collide, which I started reading on Kindle Unlimited, that one wasn't supposed to have a third act breakup either. Unfortunately, I ended up DNFing that one, but I'm trying to think of other romances I've read, but I feel like the majority definitely do have that third act breakup. I think there was only really one instance where I felt like Ren was overstepping a little bit in terms of June and that situation, but otherwise it was super cute and fluffy and lighthearted, which was what I was in the mood for. But I did start, I'm only on chapter 2 of When the Moon Hatched and I think that this has kind of been talked about a little bit on TikTok and this is a fantasy romance to my knowledge and it's pretty long so I feel like it'll definitely take me a little while to read. There's like 700 and something pages and also it's fantasy so it usually takes me longer to kind of grasp the whole fantasy world and the magic system and everything like that. And I honestly feel like I don't even have a good grasp on the plot or anything to even really say what it's about yet. But when I get a little bit further into this, I'll give you guys an update. Okay guys, I'm now 29% into When the Moon Hatched. And 
I don't know if I just didn't look at what exactly this is about. I thought this was going to be a fantasy romance, but I feel like that's not the direction that this is going to go into. The main female character, Rave, she's an assassin, but she's not really happy with her boss, it seems like. And then the main male character, I don't even, I'm gonna have to go on Goodreads to even see who it is because there's only been like one other POV that started 20%-ish through, but that was really only like one chapter. Okay, so based off of the description on Goodreads or like the blurb, it says that Khan is the main male character and he's king, which, okay, yeah, that kind of makes sense, but we really haven't had like, I'm going to also see if this says fantasy romance. Yeah, it literally has fantasy romance in the genre like tag description area on Goodreads, but that's interesting to me because we really haven't had, I can think of maybe like one time that her and the guy have kind of interacted I don't know like I don't think it's really like hitting for me I'm pretty much 30% into this and I don't know if it's because like maybe on Kindle the pages are smaller than if you're like actually reading a book so I feel like I'm further through so that more things should have been happening with the plot and the romance and whatnot but it hasn't because like there's less words on each page if that makes sense but I feel slightly bored honestly I'm going to keep trying I think I'll give it to like 50% and see how I'm feeling but I have been kind of debating whether or not I want to DNF this one unfortunately yeah I don't know I just feel like not that much has been happening and I don't feel connected to really any of the characters unfortunately but I'm going to keep trying for 20-ish percent more and I'll update you guys on if I'm going to continue or set this one down but yeah I'll talk to you guys soon Alright guys, so I did get to the part where the FMC and the MMC finally met and I feel like it was honestly kind of too late for me at that point to even really care about them and their relationship. I think I already kind of had it in my head that I was likely going to DNF this. So unfortunately, I'm not really going to learn more about that relationship or its progression and whatnot. I was also a little bit confused of the MMC's kind of motives and he did this kind of big grand thing, which I don't really understand like why he did that or like what made him do that which i mean i would probably figure out if i continued with the book but whatever i'm like fine and not knowing i guess i'm honestly feeling a little bit slumpy right now which sucks because i started since i dnf'd that last one i started powerless by lc silver and i only got like 10 pages into that one and it was kind of the situation where and all of this is on the blurb so i'm not spoiling anything but the FMC is with a guy at the start of the book and it's very obvious that this is not the right match for her and that they're not going to end up together. And then her childhood guy best friend slash the guy she's loved since childhood is going to just kind of like swoop in and save her from this bad guy who she's actually supposed to marry. Like I said, I really did not get far into this at all. I'm pretty sure I'm like, here, let me take a peek. I'm literally on page 16, so I obviously haven't given this one a full shot yet, but I just don't feel like picking it up and I don't know what to read next if I'm going to kind of set that one down. I definitely won't be fully DNFing Powerless because I barely got into it and I know the Chestnut Spring series just in general has like so much praise and everyone loves it and I thought I was more in the mood for a contemporary romance but maybe I should try another fantasy romance. I do have downloaded The Serpent in the Wings of Night on here, so maybe I will try this one out for a bit and see how that is. I have started this, I'm only on chapter two. I started this like a few weeks ago during lunchtime and never continued because I was reading like so many other books at the time, but I'm going to try this and see if this one hits because I do not want to go into a full book slump because that's just, so annoying and it's just the worst when that happens. I have some good news guys. I am 30% of the way through The Serpent in the Wings of Night now and I'm having a lot of fun reading this one. This book's about Orea, I think that's how it's pronounced, and she's a human. However, she was raised by vampires and 
not just like any random vampire she was actually raised by a vampire king and her dad the vampire king really wanted her to go into these trials which it's not really explained why these trials happen similar to in powerless by lauren roberts i feel like i don't have like a good grasp as to the purpose of these trials exactly all i know really is that it's run by this goddess i'm not sure if i just maybe missed it but yeah her dad really wants her to go into these trials for a reason that's not really explained until maybe like 20 percent ish of the way through the book and what i'm gathering by these trials it's kind of like the hunger games fighting ish to the death type situation so because of that she has to kind of find allies for like just her survival and this vampire guy his name is rain i believe that's how it's pronounced he offers to kind of team up with her and then also this like other vampire girl and it's pretty obvious from the start that rain is going to be our love interest for Aurea, but it's kind of an enemies to lovers situation because rain is from i really hope i'm saying that right r-a-i-h-n i feel like that would be rain but anyways he is from this vampire area i guess that is the enemy of her dad the king vampire i believe there's like three different kingdoms i guess so he's from an enemy kingdom so she's very hesitant to trust him at first because of that but so far i'm enjoying the development of their relationship to kind of being very untrustworthy with each other definitely more on her side than on his side he seems to be pretty trustworthy in my opinion but she is like i feel like you're sketchy and so far there's been lots of action going on which is super fun to read about training and kind of like battling fighting scenes however every few chapters there's also maybe like every five chapters or so there will be a chapter that's kind of a glimpse into the past and into Aurea's childhood and how she kind of grew up with being raised by vampires and so far i don't really like her dad her dad's name is vincent i feel like he is just super harsh with her and judgmental with some of the decisions she's made which doesn't really seem fair to me based on the kind of life or death situation that she's put in being in these trials but yeah that is it for the update so far i'm glad i picked this one up because those last two books i tried i was really worried that i was going to get into a bad slump but this definitely got me out of it. So I'll continue reading this one and I'll update you guys really soon. All right, guys, I just finished The Serpent in the Wings of Night. There are a few things that I wasn't a huge fan of in here. For example, I felt like the fantasy elements were kind of lacking and just the magic system, we weren't really explained how that works like at all. We kind of just know that it's there and that some people have it or whatever i did really like the main male character rain i thought it was really sweet how he went out of his way to do acts of service for her specifically after one of the trials you could definitely tell that he was falling first for her and this was also very slow burn romance so if you don't like that i would not recommend this because it was i think 80 percent of the way through was when rain and Aurea finally got together i'm unsure whether or not i liked the ending and all of the events that happened at the end there was one kind of reveal and twist i guess but i felt like it was kind of glossed over in like two paragraphs and to me it seemed like a way bigger deal than what the characters made it and just continuing to the end i never thought the fantasy improved in like the descriptions and stuff like that i felt like i never really fully understood the whole trials aspect with the goddess and like why that was happening and i also felt like there wasn't a focus at all on the people just like the regular people watching these trials it was mentioned a few times how these people enjoyed watching the trials and that they wanted it to be violent and entertaining and everything kind of similar to the hunger games but i feel like in the hunger games there was more insight on the capital people and how they were like obsessed with the games which I felt like helped with getting a background into the whole competition and the reasonings for it happening. But in this story, that didn't really happen, so it was kind of all just a mystery to me. I just felt like overall I didn't get enough information or insight, I guess, into the whole ordeal and the trials. 
So those are going to be all the books that I read in this video. I think I'm going to rate The Serpent in the Wings of Night three and a half stars. I would recommend it, but with some of my issues with this book in terms of the world building and the fantasy elements, I feel like it just wasn't a four star or above for me. And then the two books that I didn't finish, Powerless, which I only got like 16 pages I think into it, obviously I'm not going to rate that. When the Moon Hatched, I got 30% or 40% of the way through, or 50%, I can't even remember now. Um, I'm also not going to rate that one just because I don't really think that's fair. But the first book I read in this video, Off the Beaten Path, I'm going to give that one a 4 star. I thought it was a really good romance. I've kind of said in previous videos how contemporary romances just don't really hit the same after reading fantasy romance, but I did really enjoy that one. But yeah, that's going to be the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you've read any of these books, let me know your thoughts in a comment down below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more book content, and I will see you guys next week. Bye!